my most recent kickboxing fight, possibly my last kickboxing fight, when I executed the perfect game plan. Do I need to say any more than that to get you guys interested in this video? I don't think so. So let's roll the intro and dive right in. The very first thing I want to address is when somebody says such a bold statement like the perfect game plan, the perfect execution, that's that's wild. Like that takes a lot of balls to say that you're patting yourself on the back. So I want to go into a little bit more depth, like a little bit more of an explanation on what I actually mean by this because this fight that we're going to be looking at today was a title defense against an Italian fighter who had about a 33 and 11 record. He fought Liam Harrison. He fought Sanchai. He didn't defeat either of them, but he put on a really good performance. So what I'm saying when I executed the perfect game plan is it was not just the fact that I walked out and KO'd him. Like somebody might go, Gabriel, it wasn't perfect. When Conor McGregor defeated Aldo, Jose Aldo, that was perfect. But my response would be, okay, you know, Conor McGregor didn't come in thinking he was going to KO Aldo in five seconds. It just happened. It wasn't really the exact game plan. It didn't play out the exact way he thought it would. But this fight today against Cristiano Faustino, Christian Faustino, it went exactly as we planned. And... One of my training buddies, guy who I've been working with for years and really helped me prep up for this fight, when I came back, he said to me, and it was pretty much my thought as well, he went, Gabriel, I don't think I've ever seen somebody plan a fight out so strategically and execute it in the exact fashion which we planned. So that is what I mean by executing the perfect game plan, having the perfect fight. Yes, I didn't KO the guy in 10 seconds, but a lot of times, in my opinion, that just happens. I'm not gonna say it's fluke, but there's a decent amount of luck involved. Everything you see in this fight, everything that I execute was game planned and practiced for months to make it happen the exact way it did. So throughout this video, I'm gonna do a little bit of a breakdown of all the instances where things went right. I'm gonna show you video footage. And the first thing we're gonna start with is we looked at Faustino and we went early on, I feel like I can outbox this guy. I can throw really fast combinations, let my hands fly, and literally, I guess, excuse the pun, but beat him to the punch. And from the early onset, you saw me execute this so well, box, 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 and just throwing really beautiful, crisp hands, leaving myself completely covered up. We drilled this over and over, throw really fast combos, no openings whatsoever, and just be the first guy in, and then exit before Faustino can get his punches off. Now, as you guys know, I'm a big fan of watching previous fights of my opponents and looking at what they're really good at and what they're not great at. Now, we watch this guy compete against Liam Harrison. Liam Harrison has one of the scariest low kicks of anybody in the whole world. Faustino took a lot of them, got a little bit hurt, switched his stance, and then went back to his regular stance and then seemed fine. We went, holy smokes, if Liam Harrison cannot put this guy down with low kicks, I cannot put him down, but he's easy to score on. So instead of trying to hurt him to the leg, score to the leg over and over early on and just make sure you're touching him, you're touching him, you're touching him. Try to get a little bit of a drop on that and often set it up behind punches. We threw those punches, got those hand combos, which I just mentioned, underway. And then when he was busy and occupied with those, kaboom, drop down the kick. Again, not working loads of power because Faustino is able to check the kicks quite well, but just make sure they're landing. Make sure you're not loading up, giving him the opportunity to check. Just land and land and land. And then as we get later in the fight, it's going to be harder to land that because he'll pick up on the game plan. But it was a good idea for the early stages of the fight. Now, even though I had a game plan to throw my own low kicks, I also knew that Faustino very rarely throws kicks up to head level, sometimes to body level, but he throws a lot of low kicks. And even though he's not somebody who's going to chop my leg down, I went, why bother taking low kicks? when I can check them. So we train for this camp. Check the low kick, throw the hand combo, check the low kick, check the low kick, throw back, check the low kick. And I executed so well. And actually when the fight was finished, my thigh was 100% fine, which it usually is because I condition it. But my shin bone on the left leg ached 
for about two weeks after and was a little sore and bruised up from checking those aggressive kicks. We're gonna take a mid episode pause and I wanna take a moment and thank everybody on the channel who has messaged me asking me about a way to support the channel. They go, we love your content. We notice you don't have a Patreon or anything else. What can we do to support the channel? I have one way right now that you guys can go about helping yourselves and helping me and it is taking the leap of faith because I know a lot of people don't like buying products they're not used to. Get yourself some magnesium from Bioptimizers. This company has not only supported me in my last fight camp in an unprecedented way, but they also support the channel. Their product makes me feel so darn good. I can't believe the recovery I had in my last camp. If you are looking to support me and the channel, just head over, buy a couple bottles, try them out, not only are you helping me, but you're also going to help yourself just because I've been so impressed with how my body has been performing. Now that I'm 37, I had two years off because of the pandemic. And then I came back and I went, oh, I'm kind of feeling stiff and sore in the early stages of camp. And then as I got deeper and deeper, I started putting down more and more of these pills and I started feeling better and better and better. Guys, magnesiumbreakthrough.com forward slash Gabriel. Use the promo code Gabriel10 and your support is very appreciated. Now, when you're forming a game plan for somebody and you're trying to decide how you're going to go about winning, you need to make the assessment, can this guy be hurt? How easy is it to hurt him? And we looked at the fights that he had previously and we went, holy smokes, Liam didn't hurt him to the leg. Guys were ripping him to the body. He does a very good job of blocking, but when he takes them, he doesn't look like he's affected. When he gets hit to the head, he doesn't get super damaged. He doesn't drop like that. He's a tough guy and if he does get dropped, which happened very rarely, he pops back up and he's super focused and he never seemed dizzy. So in executing what I'm calling the perfect game plan, we went, let's not try and KO this guy. This is a decision win. This is gonna be a decision win. Let's go in, let's pick this guy apart and let's basically make it like a sparring match where I leave and I don't have a headache, I don't have a bruise, I don't have a touch on my face. In my opinion, that was executing the perfect game plan for this fight. If it was a different person, like maybe my last opponent, Bruno Assis in Karate Combat, in that one, I had to execute an entirely different game plan. But for Christian Faustino, this was perfect. Beat him by decision, don't take any impact, and treat this fight as something where you know you have future fights in, the, in your career, and you just want to minimize the damage in some fights. Now we looked at Faustino, we looked at his performance against other fighters, and we recognize this guy's cardio is crazy. And normally I am somebody who likes to bring the cardio, but because Faustino had such good cardio and because he does have that ability to just keep going and going and going, he likes to move forward. So we decided that instead of my normal fight style, where well, I'll go forward, we're gonna utilize movement. We're gonna throw some punches, we're gonna take an angle. He comes towards me, I back up, I stop him, I take an angle. This fight was very much based upon movement, which you don't normally see me execute in other fights. I stand my ground. And that's one of the reasons I was so happy with the outcome of this fight and the decision, the game plan, everything. The movement was a priority. Now, as we were just saying, movement is a priority because this guy has such good cardio. So what do you have to do when somebody has really good cardio? Well, you have to not waste energy. So I talked about movement. Movement, as long as you're not being too reckless with it, is okay. If you're running around, it's gonna get exhausting. But in this clip here, you're gonna just see how I go about making sure that I don't overexert energy and I maintain as much as possible. Strike, 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 out of distance, make him miss. Strike, 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 out of distance, start moving, make him chase me. Conserving energy and only putting it out when necessary is a great way to keep your cardio going and going and going when you have somebody who in this instance might actually have better cardio than you. I never really say that. The person had better cardio than me or better ability to keep going throughout the fight. So if they do, why am I going to meet them head on? No, no, I'm going to conserve my energy. I'm going to be smart and I'm going to play the fight out so that I'm not the person who ever gets tired first. Now we already talked about the movement, but something else that I recognized in this fight, like with many of my opponents, is I would have the slightly longer arms. Faustino wasn't that much shorter, but if I throw, 
he's gonna be a little bit out of range. So being able to back up and punch with long arms, just have that little advantage, keep this guy at range was very important. And you see me execute this many times in the fight, taking advantage of the longer arms and the distance which I have over my opponent. Now in Faustino, we recognized, in spite of everything I've already said, this guy had a super tight guard, crazy tight, and like we said, he keeps trucking forward. When you have somebody who has a crazy tight guard and you're not finding holes, you're gonna go, okay, if I throw 10, 15 punches at one level, he's gonna block them. If I throw 10 punches down here, he's gonna block them. You have to level switch. And we worked that so much in this fight. If you watch the fight in its entirety, you're very rarely gonna see me throw more than two shots at one height. It's here, down, back up, throw the low kick, or to the head a couple times, throw the low kick, back to the head, finish to the body. Level switches, so important when you're fighting somebody who has good defense and a tight guard, because you need to make things more complicated for that high level defense, which they have. Now, obviously to make this video, I rewatched the fight and something I got a bit of a kick out of was the announcers saying at one point, I believe in the third or fourth round, they go, whoa, Faustino's giving Varga a little bit of trouble. Gotta love the pressure that Faustino's bringing, man. It's, it's causing Absolutely. problems for Varga. Because of his pressure. But I'm moving, I'm angling, and any time Faustino lands a shot, I hit him back with one or two, or sometimes even three. Or in this instance, four. He lands a shot, and then bang, 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 four shots right down the middle. A big part of this fight, this game plan, was don't let this guy win anything. We're not gonna try and go head to head with him, but if he hits you, tag him back. If he comes towards you, angle off. If you throw your punches and you're on the, the offense, then angle, let him miss, and then attack again. While I was in this fight, I was going, wow, everything is playing out exactly the way we wanted, and I'm in zero trouble. And it's very funny to hear announcers who are supposed to be super high-level guys watching and not recognizing. I mean, they did to a certain extent. They number of times said, oh, Gabriel's just fighting his fight. He's doing it so well. But for any moment to think that I was having problems was very funny to me. And you know, you just sometimes have to ignore what other people say and just after the fact go, that was a pretty awesome fight. Now, obviously when you are fighting somebody and you want to maintain distance, one of the easiest ways to do that is the front kick. Very often, I don't worry about maintaining lots of distance. You guys know from the fights you've seen me do before, I like to get tight and I like to have gritty fights. But in this one, like I said, why fight here with Faustino where cardio might be in his advantage and fighting here when he wants to truck forward and be in that position, is just nothing that I need to be interested in. So the front kick was utilized very nicely a number of times, just sharp little piercing front kicks, not trying to throw loads of energy in them, just hit him in the stomach, make him uncomfortable for walking straight forward. And in this little clip, you see front kick and then follow up with another one. Like I said, he has that tight guard, so he's not open to doing fancy little switches like front kick to the body and then come to the head, where a lot of people will see the second one and they'll compromise their guard but Faustino is very smart, very diligent with staying defensive. So you just keep hitting the same area. The front kicks are generally quite open on people who keep that tight Dutch style guard because they don't want to compromise their defense by reaching and scooping or reaching and catching. And the final thing which I want to touch on, which was part of the game plan, we talked about movement, but I just want to point out as we get later in the fight, really working circling. That circle movement is so important. And many people, when they move laterally, just go completely sideways. When you go completely sideways, if my opponent's here and I can touch them, if I move sideways, now I'm way out of range. So you see me execute nice circles so that I can take that angle, touch them again. And then I get back to my neutral position, take an angle, touch them again. That is something I was very happy in this fight, game plan wise, because it's not something I usually do, but to be able to implement something into training camp and then execute it, even though it's not really part of my style, I was very happy about that. And it just added a little bit of extra pride, I suppose, to the performance which I had. So that right there is a breakdown of what I'm calling the perfect game plan and the perfect execution in the fight. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you would like to see the full fight, 
either with me commentating or the actual commentator is just doing their thing, let me know in the comments below, full fight, please, and I will try and get it up. Who knows with copyright laws if I'll be able to upload the video, but I do have it on my computer, so I would love to share it with you guys if you're interested in seeing the full fight after watching this breakdown. If you enjoyed the episode, please give it a like. If you have not already, join the channel and get subscribed. As always, guys, train hard, and I will see you back here soon for another video.